blah. So um, I feel like I need to say this when it's on the recording. So I'll say it again fast. This is the second time I've started the recording. I'm recording the screen, not showing people, and I'm not uh, recording voices that people say. And here we are, physics nine, finally. Um, so the lesson plan um, for today. Um, bloop, bloop. Uh, the lesson plan is something that your folks can see too. Um, so I post it in this document so that uh, family members can see it. Uh, if I post it just to Google Classroom, then your family members might not see it. Um, it's not showing my, uh, yeah. no, Lord. Well, I'll turn that off. We'll see. Um, it looks like I might have an issue with my screen recording again. It is what it is, gotta get going. Um, so, uh, lesson plan for today, um, Monday, February 8th, uh, Black History Month, uh, week two. Last week, towards the end, I showed, scroll down, scroll down, you can do it. Oh, that's on the other page. Uh, last week, um, we started off uh, going old school. Um, bloop, bloop. Uh, so, we started off with uh, Dr. Edward, whoa, too far. Dr. Edward Boucher. I think that's how you say Boucher. Um, sorry, uh, when I got my degree, we had a bunch of physics classes. We didn't do uh, really history of anything. Um, some stuff, the history comes up uh, when you're like just uh, studying um, relativity or some quantum physics stuff. The history kind of comes up naturally as we're learning things. But uh, for most things, there's not really like a, a history of physics class. So um, I. I uh, am finding out about people as I Google them. Uh, and so last week was old school. This week, uh, we're not going uh, back in the day. We're going today. So Dr. Clifford V. Johnson, a uh, theoretical physicist out of, uh, I think he went to school in the United Kingdom uh, in England. And this is all stuff I um, basically like Googled, copy pasted. I tried to point, point that out down here. Um, so I got it from two different sources. Uh, that if you want to check out more about him, uh, <laughs> dude's done done some stuff. It's impressive. Um, so uh, just flat out put those sources down on the bottom. Uh, this is um, copy paste with a little bit of moving from those two different sources. So um, I don't claim any of this to be my own. Um, uh, but uh, I like the quote at the beginning. He said, all children start out as scientists uh, uh, exploring the world and doing experiments. When I learned you could do this for a living, uh, hey, I thought uh, that's what I want to do. What a deal. Um, and uh, he has this memory of uh, uh, as a child going to the dictionary and looking up every istinologist. Uh, and he picked physics uh, because the dictionary says it underlines everything, underlies everything. <laughs> hey. There you go. Um, he's got a bunch of different awards. He's gone through a bunch of different places. He's done a bunch of cool things. Um, what brought him up to my radar was that he, in 2018, won a, an award, uh, the Klopstig Award, that uh, is for people that are uh, both good at what they do and then good at engaging the public. Um, uh, so this, some of his awards section lists a bunch of accomplishments and things like that. Um, in my opinion, high school kids, we don't pay too much to like, Hey, he got this award, he got that award. So the cool stuff is actually like cool stuff. Um, he, he does a lot to promote, uh, public outreach and things like that. Uh, he's appeared in some TV documentaries and I'm just kind of reading and paraphrasing what's in here, uh, uh such as the universe in, a uh, Nova shows, which is on PBS. Uh, and Horizon uh, uh, acts as a consultant for movies and TV shows like the National, Geogra National Geographic has a show called Genius um, uh, where they talked about Einstein. He was a consultant for Marvel's movie uh, Thor Ragnarok <laughs> and Agent Carter um, uh, and Star Trek Discovery uh, and things like that. Uh, so um, he also has a nonfiction book that he wrote uh, called The Dialogues, Conversations About the Nature of the Universe. Um, Science Friday is a podcast uh, from NPR, NPR, uh, and they did a deal on it. So uh, guy's done a lot of cool stuff. Um, so there you go. There's the, the quick background on Dr. Johnson. Um, there's more information on these two links if you're interested. Um, one of them is really, the bottom one, is really um, 
specifically about uh, the, the Klopstick Award that he got. The top one is um, uh, the, there are a couple of different physics societies. The top one is from the American Physics Society. Uh, and they have, uh, oh, you can see as I have that link highlighted, uh, they have a, a thing called Black Voices in Physics. Um, and so they go through and they uh, interview and talk with different people about um, the work that they do and some of the challenges that they face, both academic and social. Um, so uh, if you're interested in those things, uh, that's all there. All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and I've put, um, I'm just going to continue to add uh, each new week, we'll add another um, Black History Month person. Uh, and I'll just keep on putting them on that same spot. I have to admit a, a weakness of mine. This isn't, uh, you know, as an old white guy, I don't know a lot about um, uh, other races and uh, the history of a lot of, uh, well, history in general is not something I search out. Uh, and I don't know a lot about uh, these different things. And I have to admit then that I didn't, uh, I didn't honestly. I didn't even know that there was like a Native American uh, History Month, or and a, a Latin American History Month. So um, I completely uh, well, wasn't aware at all. So I didn't do anything at all for those months. I I, I looked them up, and now I will do that next year. Um, but uh, so if uh, I missed that, and that's something that's important to you, my apologies. Um, uh you know when we know better we do better and i'm trying to figure stuff out so uh then we're on to live session that's where we are today right now um there are a couple of things that i want to make sure we go through and do i want to make sure we see the um way that we check what assignments we have done what's been turned in and what's been submitted um my impression is that a lot of people go by just like the color coding but that's not entirely accurate um, so I'm going to show you uh, that using a classroom thing that I've been placed in. And then after we do that, we'll just spend some time working through the Pivot Interactives lab. So uh, you're welcome. Back at you. Uh, so the uh, um, Google Classroom stuff, uh, looking at how we can figure out our homework and things like that. Still saying stuff is cringy and is cringe. Um, TikTok. <laughs> Sorry, I just opened up the chat. Um, TikTok cringe. Uh, so I'm hoping the cringe was about TikTok and not about my uh, other stuff. <laughs> so um, I'm okay, cringy old man. Uh, I'm not okay, cringy. Uh, racist old man, right? You know, so hopefully it was just cringy old man. If it was the other, uh, please let me know if there's something that I do that steps over the line in those regards. I'm learning. Um, so where was I going? Okay. Uh, uh, homework, Google Classroom stuff. So um, this is the staff development thing that every teacher is uh, shoved into. Um, so I'm showing you just my view because it's one of the spots where I'm kind of like student role where things are assigned to me that I then take a look at and uh, we go through there. Um, so if I'm going to check to see what stuff I've got done, what stuff I'm missing and things like that, uh, I, the tempting thing is to go down here and view all, but I think the slightly better uh, way to go is if I click classwork and then I click view your work. So this is what you should be able to see in all of the classes in which you're enrolled. Uh, click view your work, and then you'll see um, how much, uh, how, to, how to use this resource, and, and also then how uh, things are, like feedback is there. So when I go here, um, after having just clicked on view your work, click on view your work, then over here, all, this is just showing everything, and that's not terribly useful. Uh, if I click on assigned, then that just shows uh, all of the things that have been assigned to me, kind of helpful. Uh, if I click on missing, this is the stuff that's missing. For you, please, if you're looking to, if you're looking for missing work, please check this. Don't check color codes. Don't check anything else. Go to view view your work and then check missing. Um, I do my best to really use uh, Google Classroom in this way. 
um, and then returned, there's nothing for me here because for staff development, nobody ever returns things to teachers. It's like, yeah, yeah whatever, take care of yourself, blah. Um, but this is a, a spot where if you click on this, you would, uh, in this class, uh, have all the assignments that you've done in Google Classroom, you would see them here, uh, and it would list the points that you've earned and all of those sorts of things. Whatever you see in the return spot, you just hold on to and keep. Don't, don't resubmit it unless you work to improve your score. Uh, does that make sense? Okay, a couple of head nods, a couple of, uh -huh. um, any questions on this? All righty. Um, so I'll close that down. Um, all right, so now we're at the spot where we're gonna take a look at the Pivot Interactives lab. Um, like it says here, there are two versions. So you can um, choose which one fits for you. If you have an IEP or a 504, or if you're uh, learning English, then there's this modified version. That's um, probably, uh, I, I just tried to, shorten the words down a, a little bit uh, and uh, uh, streamline some things. Uh, it's almost identical uh, to the other assignment. Uh, if you don't have an IEP or a 504, well, hey, this one right here. Um, again, the difference is uh, minimal. Uh, so we'll go through, we'll take a look at that. Um, we've got maybe 15-ish minutes left in uh, our live uh, session. Um, we'll see how we do going on that. I'm pretty certain that um, we'll be able to finish this today. Um, excuse me. Um, whatever we don't finish in this 15 minutes, uh, you should be able to finish in the 30 minutes after the live session. Um, and we'll continue on from there. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Before we do that, I want to check and make sure that we're able to um, see the class on the on your Google Calendar. Um, uh, if you would, um, you should be able to go to your Google Calendar. So uh, from uh, Google Classroom, you should be able to click on Classwork and then click on Google Calendar. And these live sessions on Mondays and Thursdays should show up there. I invited everybody. Um, you're seeing all my appointments and everything also. Um, but I invited Google the this Google class to to have this on their calendar. So if you don't see it showing up on your calendar, then you probably need to go off. Um, uh, if you don't see it showing up here in your calendar on Monday and Thursday, then you might need to go over to the side where it says my calendars uh, and find the physics nine quarter three. And it, uh, it once you check on it there, it should then show up in your calendar. You with me there? Is it showing up on your calendars? <laughs> All right. How do you say no in French? <laughs> Did you just say no? Known? <laughs> oh boy uh, so far uh that's the best part of my day <laughs> we oh. uh all right um so uh turn that off so hopefully that makes sense and uh i've had some students in the past say hey it shows up uh here on my regular computer or on my Chromebook, but not on my phone. And again, that's just another spot where you need to go to your phone. Your phone has uh, has a different version of this thing on the left side where you have to um, check and, and make sure that that calendar is visible. Um, so it should all be there. All right, uh, on to Pivot Interactives. Interactives. So. Um, I'm just going to go through and we'll start uh, talking about and taking a look at and seeing what questions we have for this stuff. I think um, we'll go through the first part, uh, just kind of discussing those questions and seeing what we can do. Log in. Um, 
activities. Uh, then I'll spend a little bit of time making sure that we're comfortable with um, the, the graphing aspect of things uh, and see what we can do there. Preview. All right. Uh, Super Bowl, Vikings won, another one. What a deal. That's, uh, what is that, 55 straight? God, what a run. Um, hey, hey, purple pride, purple pride. Um, all right. So um, with this, uh, let's see. If I do this, you can still see just bigger, yeah? OK, thanks for the head nods. I appreciate it. You never know when, when something's going to go away. Uh, that was your shot to say, we. But you know, I won't hold it against you. Um, so uh, I click on the toolbar deal, uh, and out comes the ruler. And that's the only uh, real tool that we need for this, because this scale shows us the force in Newtons. So we're looking at this red sphere, this silver sphere. Um, and the gist of things is we're going to try to line this thingy up so that the, the zero is right on that white line. Dang, that's pretty close. Not dead on, but. Uh, it's, fine. it's okay there. Um, and then as we go through boy, this, can I drag this? I can't drag this. This is in the wrong spot. You go away. Um, we'll see. Um, I might need to minimize load. Yeah. Escape. There we go. Um, so now once we go here, we can hit play and this thing uh, adjusts. So that right there is them putting a charge on that top sphere, that weird like pizza plate. They go over to the side, they um, uh, get some charge on it, and then they come back and they put charge on those two spheres. Uh, and once there's charge on those two spheres, we already know opposites attract. We've heard that phrase forever, like charges repel. Uh, and we can see these things. I'm going to pause it. Um, so we can see what we've got going on here. And there's the scale there with the number. I'm going to uh, blow this thing up again so we can kind of see things a little bit better. So if I lean way in, there's 0 0.000. So 0 0.3 zeros, 49 Newtons. Yeah. Uh, and then up here, I can read this. Uh, that's 30, that's 25, 26, 27. Yeah. So the white line on the sphere is close to 28, but not quite. So I'd say maybe 27.8-ish. That's the sort of data taking process that we'll be going through with this lab, recording the force that the scale reads. So how much this thing is pushing down on there. Uh, and um, than the distance between the two. They zeroed the scale with that little sphere on there. So it's not including the weight of the sphere. Um, that is, it's, it's just zeroed with that on there. So the process for this lab is to go through and tr try to get those things uh, recorded. Um, so uh, we can go through, take a quick look at these. Oh, and I should say, uh, we have all of these stuff, this stuff up here. And I put it there. And when I put it there, I think, I, gee, I hope the kids read this. And then I just blew right by it. Um, so, you know, uh, so what we're going to try to do with this lab is collect some data. And then from the data, we're going to try to get uh, a graph. And from the graph, we get an equation. So. The idea is the way all science is done, collect data and then create a model from the data. So we're going to try to collect data and then get a relationship or an equation uh, that says, hey, how does the force depend? How does the charge, the force between those charges, how does that depend on the distance between those charges? Um, if we get a straight line, well, then it's a linear relationship. If we get a curve, well, we'll see what kind of curve. Um, so this lab is about trying to get that equation and get that relationship. Um, so with these sorts of labs, as we're going through, uh, we don't necessarily um, uh, know exactly what the answer is going to be until we collect our data and we plot that stuff out. Um, so uh, we're going to try to get the relationship between the electrostatic force and the distance between those charges. So force and charges. 
So here we say we're going to change the distance and measure it. We're going to measure the force at each distance. Everything else is going to be constant. So which of these needs to be kept constant? The charge, the force, or the distance? Well, if we're changing distance and measuring force, should be keeping the charge constant. And then like it says here, make sure you hit submit. Submit. Nailed it. Great work. We are awesome. Way to go, team. Winning. All right. Uh, and then the independent variable is the thing that we are directly changing. The independent variable is the thing that we're modifying as we go trial by trial or step by step. Um, and the thing that this person is most directly changing as we go through and make these measurements, um, well, the charge is constant, so definitely not the charge. Uh, and we're measuring the force with the scale, but the thing that we're directly changing, the independent variable should be the distance between those spheres. The kid in the video is adjusting the string, letting the spheres go uh, change their height. So we're gonna directly change the distance between those spheres. Submit. Boop. Uh, then the dependent variable is the thing that changes in response to that. So as we're changing the position between those spheres, the thing that changes based on that distance changing, um, not the charge, that again, we're trying to keep constant. When we change the distance, the thing that changes in response to that is the force. So the two things that are changing, we're directly changing the distance. So that's our independent variable. We are modifying and controlling and manipulating that. And we're observing changes in force. We're trying to get the relationship between position or distance and force. Submit. Great work, you guys. Um, and then we move on. Uh, so, uh, and then here they're talking about uh, making these adjustments and using that tool. So um, we want to make sure that we put the zero in the ruler in the middle of the silver sphere. Like uh, there's that white line there. We want that zero to be right there. Uh, and for this question, we're going to try to um, get this thing so that the red sphere is at 30 centimeters. And we're going to measure that value and see where we're at. So scrolling back up, that's one thing that's a little bit annoying. The video takes up a lot of space. So sometimes you have to scroll back and forth. So here, um, we're already past 30. So remember these things here, you can use um, these arrows to click uh, back a frame. Um, I think the, yeah, the arrows on your keyboard also work. Um, so right now, if you are hearing the click, 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 that's me clicking the keyboard. Um, and now I'm going to zoom this bugger way in because the data that we get really depends on uh, how good our data is, how good our graph is, really depends on how careful we are with uh, our data collection. So, um, so zooming in on the screen is going to probably make our data a little bit better uh, and give us a slightly better curve. So right here, I would say that my zero line is pretty much right on or as close as I could get it to the white line for the sphere. And the 30 centimeters is pretty much spot on the, the middle of that. And it looks like I've got 0 0.0003 newtons of force. So I can go down here, 0 0.0030 newtons of force, submit. Um, the graphing tips, this is a video from Pivot Interactives and it's really general. It's not um, uh, specific to what we're doing right now. Uh, it looks like we have two minutes until our class is supposed to be over. So I'm going to skip that video because it's a two minute video. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So if we go down here, um, uh, you can either do trial one or trial two, depending on uh, which version, pardon me, trial one or trial three, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, depending on which version you're doing and where your birth month falls and stuff like that. So if you're doing the, the modified version, I think I clicked on the modified version. If you're doing the modified version, then uh, you just do, there's just one. Um, the option is you can click on trial and then uh, click positive, positive or negative, negative. The others work, but there's a little twist that we need to make when we're graphing, and I just thought it's not worth um, 
that worry. Uh, so um, I'm just going to go over there. Um, so um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, make sure this is one point that uh, I want to make sure we're aware of. For points for your graph, um, make sure that all of your distances are larger than 10 centimeters. Um, once you get closer than that, what ends up happening is the charges, th those spheres are metal and charges can move on metals. So when we get closer and closer and closer, when we're at like 10 centimeters or less, then the charges and how they move on a sphere to the other side uh, becomes more significant. Um, so the distance that we measure isn't uh, quite as accurate. It's still an accurate distance from middle to middle, but it's not an accurate distance from where the charges are on the two things. So um, make sure all of your distances are larger than 10 centimeters. Um, and it's, yeah, it's 11 o'clock. So if you need to go, you need to go. That's perfectly fine. Uh, you can hang up and move on. Um, if you wanna hang out and we'll just kind of continue to look through some stuff, you can hang out and we'll look through some stuff. Um, perfectly fine either way. Um, so uh, this is the point layout for uh, the data table and the graph. So um, I, we should be able to get like ballparkish seven or so data points uh, as we go through. Um, and we are gonna want force on the Y axis and distance on the X axis. Um, then, uh, so as we go through and collect that data, um, I'm just gonna, uh, um, I'll go through and I'll collect maybe a couple of points and then I'll let you guys uh, go through. Um, the reason I wanna collect just a couple of points is to make sure that we have a chance to um, take a look at the graph. Uh, and it's now a minute or two after 11. So if you have an 11 o'clock class, uh, you better get rolling. Um, so I'm going back now. This is the one that we're using for data collection. So I'm resetting the meter stick or the ruler, making sure that my zero is as close to that white line, the middle of that white line as possible. I feel like I got her okay there. Um, and now I'm going to, and, and you can see also, maybe I should have mentioned that. You can see right now that these are far enough apart and they're not charged and the scale reads zero. So when it's not charged, the scale reads zero. So that does um, substantiate the fact or prove the fact that they zeroed the scale without with uh, that mass on there. So it's not including, or uh, we don't need to worry about the mass of those, of those spheres or the little PVC rod that's holding it. They're going through, charging those buggers up. And then, Really, uh, you, know, you just heard the kids say go, they're going. And now the, the uh, at some point on here, they mentioned, hey, if we watch, they lower that thing and then they stop at a couple of points. Those are good places to collect data. We can also just kind of um, frame advance um, until we like the spot we're on uh, and we can go with that. So, um, I'm going to try to catch a spot where I see the white line in a, the white line for the red sphere in a um, spot that's uh, reasonable. So right here, I'd say that's 25, that's 26. The white line looks a little bit bigger than 26, but not quite the 27. So I'm going to say 26.2, right? Um, excuse me. And if we ignore all the 26.2s and just make it 26, or if we ignore all the 26.8s and just make it 27, that really, you're gonna see that um, effect on your graph and it's gonna look, your the trend line, the curve won't uh, fit quite as nicely. So I said 26.2, so now I scroll down here. Uh, the distance was 26.2 centimeters, 26.2. And then the force was zero point, and now I need to go up and read uh, zero point one, two, three zeros and a two nine. I think it is zero point zero 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 two nine. I always get nervous about how many zeros are. I'm going to double check it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty
do you, yeah, that's right. Um, nervous is maybe not the right word, but it always feels like, ah, geez, did I get the right one there? So there's my first data point. Um, and then uh, we'll blow it up again, and I'm just going to quickly clack um, the arrows. Right there. So right there, that looks uh, spot on, the 31. Well, let's see. It does. But that, if it goes too fast, we're not going to see it change. Here, I'm going to go back here. So there's the 30 and 30. So the distance to me looks like 30 centimeters. Whoop. The sound effects don't come with the software. You have to make those on your own. Feel free to do that. Zero, 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 three, zero. Okay, so I've got two data points. I'm gonna get one more and then we'll go through and we'll take a look at uh, um, the graphing side of things. And just to make sure that we see um, uh, that it's, uh, it should not be linear, um, so I'm going to try to make sure I get something that's uh, a ways down the road so we see that it's not linear. Because um, if I get all of my points really close together, well, um, if all of your data is really close together, pretty much everything looks linear, right, if you zoom in. So this to me looks like I'm at about 15. The line's at a smidge bit of an angle. So I'm going to say like 15 point, I'm going to say 15.1. Uh, and you know what? I'm not going to remember both things. I'm going to go 15.1 uh, and then it's 00135. Okay, so now that's just three data points for me. You guys should have five to seven. I think seven would probably be better. Um, and then I'm going to go down to the graph, and we see there's a data point here, a data point here, and a data point here. If I wouldn't have collected, uh, if I wouldn't have given that much space for my last data point, we would have had like three data points all right down here, and it probably would have looked like a pretty straight line. So I'm just grabbed three within that with a wider range just to make sure that we saw that there was a curve there. So now. Um, making sure that you have distance on the x-axis and force on the y-axis. If that's not the way it shows up, you can click on it and say, oh, I want force, and that's it. For uncertainties, we're not doing uncertainties there. Leave that be. That just makes things a mess. Um, and then on the x-axis, distance, data column, distance, um, done. So there we have it. Uh, and then as we go through and we start to analyze and interpret these things, um, we're going to add a trend line. So if I click on the gear, I guess in here they call them curve fits. Uh, so a curve fit, if I go um, linear, well, it'll do whatever we say. It puts a line on there. But we can kind of look and see, hey, does that look good or not good? That does not match, right? Um, so I'm going to uh, try a different curve. And instead of linear, uh, I can look at the square law. And um, we can see in the background possibly that there's a green line there, but that sure doesn't look like it's matching either. Um, square root, that doesn't look like it's matching. Um, inverse, getting closer. Come on. Oh, I've got that in the way. Hide. Uh, inverse square. So the inverse square is a little bit closer right now. And so inverse square, it's saying force is equal to some constant or some number divided by d squared. That should be the one that we see fit a little bit better uh, than some of the others. But uh, you know, we'll see what you get. Um, and with only three data points, it's not a great, um, it's not enough to really see that for sure. Uh, but then once we've got that, now we can go through down here. Um, and when you're checking your curve fits, um, there are some options that they present for us down here. You can check those. Um, so that's it's five after, ten after. Um, uh, I think that should give us a pretty good roll on this thing. You guys have any uh, 
any questions or uh, observations or concerns about this assignment or anything else? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Those aren't supposed to, sorry, those weren't supposed to have, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. So um, I'm just going to repeat this. I'm going to say it so that it's on the recording. Questions one and two in the conclusion just don't make sense. What I tried to do is just make a statement. There is no question there. Um, thank you for bringing that up. I really appreciate that. Um, I was just trying just trying to make, I, I wouldn't have seen that um, because I went through, I don't know how many times as I was trying to change things. So one and two are not questions. They're just statements. I'll try to make an edit there. Um, I don't know if it'll roll that out. So you'll see that in the next like 90 seconds when I'm done. Um, thanks for asking. I really appreciate that. Uh, you're, you're surely not alone in that concern. Um, so one and two are just saying, hey, we collect data, we plot it out. This is how science figures out what these equations and relationships are. Nobody in science is just like, you know what, the heck with it. I like uh, these uh, things with the square roots and the pressure power, and I'm just going to make an equation off of that. Phone's ringing. Um, we always try to collect data, plot it out. And one and two are really just trying to say that. OK. Uh, any, any other questions or concerns? Thank you. Thank you, have a good one. Okay, so uh, y'all can hang up as folks are. If you wanna continue to be, uh, to stay uh, on the call, you can stay on the call and we'll see what we need to do. Um, hey, thanks man, have a good one. We'll see you.